I've been trying for some time to do this video without any luck, but um, I, I think I got it today. I think I'm going to show you something. But here's one of the things that I think every floodplain manager needs is a, a set of building footprints for their county. <clears throat> but what's happened is that Microsoft has released building footprints for the entire nation, every state, and you can download it by state. And this is the site on GitHub where you can do that. It's pretty nice because they extract it from the uh, imagery that they use and uh, it creates, they've created these layers. And it, here it talks about the accuracy. <clears throat> and I myself think it's pretty accurate. I looked at it in my area and vicinity that I know of and uh, it looks pretty accurate. I'm not sure I would make it uh, uh, this high. I would say probably about 80 or more, but uh, it's a really good, great resource. However, one of the issues is that it's in JSON format. You download a zip file here. If you can see down at the bottom, it's a zip file. And it's in JSON format. <clears throat> and, I, and, I, and I did it and I converted it inside of QGIS. And to do it was pretty easy. You really, all you need to do is go to layers, add vector layer, and go to the JSON file in your folder. The only issue is you have to set it to all files because JSON is not an extension that is um, in the QGIS. So you have to do all files. The one that they put in there is GeoJSON, which that file is not. Most of the time yours will be set on something that you did last, maybe shapefile or something like that. So if you don't change it to all files, you won't be able to bring it in. Now, I brought it in and converted it and saved it as a shape file and then ran the fix on it. But um, <clears throat> I found something that was even quicker than that. The, what, what started happening was I couldn't record when I was showing that process. It was just it was taxing my system. The, my computer isn't that uh, that big of a system so uh but i found this uh website called map shaper that allows me to just drag and drop that file in there <clears throat> and i think i can even do it just as a zip file just drag that baby in there and watch what it does it asks you to do things might as well select them so yeah we want to see it and then hit import <clears throat> and it's very, it's pretty fast, even with all the uh, selections checked on there. So, and then you get to see it. So that's pretty neat too. So we'll take a look at it inside of this map shaper. This is a, another, I think this is another project that was out on the GitHub for, uh, you know, open source mapping. There it is. It, well, what's nice about it <clears throat> is it's every structure in the state. You know, a lot of times when we were doing this for floodplain management and it would be so expensive and, and uh, time consuming to do, we only did um, uh, structures that were in the floodplain. So this is amazing to see all these structures available. I mean, we just did a project uh, where we were hoping to derive um, building footprints from LIDAR and it still took a lot of editing. So this is just amazing. <clears throat> so we're going to pull it up in one of shape files and look at it. So once you get it in here and that was pretty quick, way quicker than what my machine did. You just hit export. <clears throat> I'm going to choose shape file and hit export. And we'll see how long that takes. The other one, I think I measured it one time. You know, maybe about 50, 40 seconds, something like that. <clears throat> you know, so uh, I'm sure that they have a faster server than I have computer. <clears throat> <clears throat> Excuse me. So let's see what this does. Exporting, exporting, come on. doing something there it is 
it downloaded it. I'm sure that put that into the um, uh, download folder. But I have a copy here already. Uh, let's see. I think this is the, the JSON file. Yeah, I have to go to my download directory and get that. I remember now because it was the same name as the original. So I have to copy it, paste it here. I'm just going to paste it on my desktop because I already got a one with that name in it. Now I'll extract it. Uh, I'll extract it to the directory. We'll put it back in here. And then we'll bring it into QGIS. So one of the things I was doing when I was playing around trying to get this thing to work was <clears throat> I changed a lot of settings on my computer to make it faster. So one of the things I did was change when the layers are added, not to show it. Because it was, you know, like I said, I got it to work, but it was putting a strain on my computer. So I decided to turn that off. I do that at my work computer, too, even with a bigger machine. And um, it seems to, to help because... Whenever you add that big one and you have them turned on most of the time, <laughs> it's that 1% that gets you, you know, it's like, okay, I should have turned that off. So I just leave them turned off when they're, they're added and when I need them, I turn them on. <clears throat> but you can see how fast the shapefile is in QGIS and how uh, uh, massive a structured data set is. It's, it's, I'm still, I still just like looking at it. I mean, it's pretty amazing. But what I want to show you is I'm going to bring and put a layer um, in here from our aerial photography that we use with the state. So we can just see how good this stuff is. There was one area I was looking at in particular. I wanted to just give you an example of. And it looks like it just picked up. I mean, <clears throat> I've done this for a long time and just picking up houses, you know, and relevant structures as opposed to, you know, all the outbuildings and, you know, additional structures that could be in a in the vicinity of a parcel it's just amazing i want to want to turn this i want to turn this fill color i want to turn that off and i want to make those uh, i want to make i want to make that yellow So look at all these buildings. I mean, you know, like here's a here's a great example of what I'm seeing. You know, it does a really great job on typical houses. I mean, you can see that there. It just picked them out. Perpendicular corners. You know, there's stuff in the yards that it didn't pick up that were accessory type buildings or, you know, maybe porches or something. <clears throat> but then here is a really good example of maybe some of the things that it doesn't do well. So this is a big uh, complex of industrial type buildings. And you can see that it didn't do that very good. <clears throat> and this is what happens. And I've, I've noticed this across it is that sometimes it makes multiple buildings, one building and vice versa. So, you know, part of that 
20% inaccuracy or 10% inaccuracy is that. And then sometimes it follows the shadows. And, and I think, you know, that's a result of just the aerial photography and how good it was for that vicinity. But even so, man, what a great start. This is a great beginning. And I think if, uh, you know, as far as utilizing this for doing planning and, and uh, floodplain management, I think it's a great resource. And that's all I have. Enjoy.